continuing with our waveform demo, this time I want to talk about animations. And I have this randomize button that is going to pick a random amplitude and frequency. And when you click it, you can see that these values uh, update and it updates the graph because it re-renders it all. And what I would like to do is have an animation here and I could say with animation default and then put those things inside of the animation. And when I do that, you can see that now the sliders are animating, but our graph is not animating. And the reason is because I have determined the end state for some new state properties, uh, the ending values, and the current values are, are the starting values. And the SwiftUI system will just create our view with those new values. And so for the slider, if we go down to the, the actual param slider, this has an animation internally that knows how to interpolate the value from what it was to what it is now. But we haven't taught that for our graph view here. So uh, I wanna do that next. So going into our graph view, we have our view here. It, it determines the sine function, the taper function, and as well as these three properties. And then we have this waveform shape. So I need to make a few changes to start off with this, this change. So our waveform shape takes the function range and steps and it computes the points itself. And I wanna change this instead by telling the points that it's going to come from somewhere else. So I'm going to actually just take all of this out of this and replace this with an array of doubles. So when you create, construct your waveform shape, you are responsible for giving it an array of doubles and then it will use those to normalize the points. Now we have some compile errors that we'll have to resolve, but I'm just gonna move those here into this graph view. And right here, um, we can compute all of the things that we need to do and then just hand the waveform shape its points. So let's take the range out of this and move it up here. So we're going negative two pi to two pi. And then our steps is going to be 300. So we get a nice uh, high resolution curve. And then now I can take all of those out and have the points be our points uh, array here. Now this needs to be returning a double. And um, if you recall, we weren't actually using this X parameter anyway. So building the points is really just building out the Y values across the X range. And uh, where they are used, it's gonna compute a new screen X anyway. And so we actually don't need this at all. And we just need to app append that Y value to our array and return it. Okay, so that brings us back up to here. Now when we're saying normalized points, this is no longer a point, but instead a Y value. So I can just use point as a Y value. And because it's a double, we need to con uh, convert it to CG float. Okay, let's resume our preview and make sure that it still works. Okay, I made a mistake somewhere in here. So we never actually set up this function here. I can just delete that and we can use it um, here. Instead of saying a function of X there, we can just say sine func of X times taper func of X here. Now, if we resume our preview, now it's back to the way it was before. Still not animated, but we have made a structural change that's gonna support what we're going to be doing. So right here, we have this shape and shapes themselves can be animated, but I wanna talk about a different mechanism for animation because essentially we have some parameters here that could be animated. So I first wanna start with animating one of these values. And so we'll, we'll start with maybe animating the frequency because that's probably the most drastic parameter here. So what I need to do, it's tempting to say that a view is animatable. And this is a mistake that I've made time and time again, and then I get frustrated when it doesn't actually animate anything. And I believe that animatable is just not appropriate for a view at all. And there are three things that you can animate currently as of the uh, as of iOS 14 SwiftUI. And that is a shape, a shape is already animatable, as is a geometry effect. So if you're doing something that just affects the transform of a given item, then you can use geometry effect. And for all other things, you can use animatable modifier. Now the animatable modifier is what we're gonna be using today. So let's create a struct called animatable graph. 
and that's going to be an animatable modifier. We're going to have that take in these parameters, and we'll make them required by deleting the default values. Next, we need to have our body function. So instead of a body property like a normal view, this one is going to be modifying some content that's passed in. So here we're going to say content, and then we're just going to overlay the graph on top of this. So I'm actually going to be rendering the graph view inside of here. And now we can pass in amplitude, frequency, phase, and for the other two, we'll just leave those at their default values. Okay, so at this point, let's fix the closing parentheses there so we are building again. Now, instead of using our graph view, we're going to use the animatable graph. So we're gonna go down here to our content view where graph view is set up. And instead of using it here, we're going to essentially need a modifier. And the modifier needs to modify some content. So you could use maybe a rectangle and then say modifier, animatable graph, and then pass in amplitude, frequency, and face. And we'll use the blending modes and the frame modifier that we were already using. So if we run this, we now have a rectangle. And because the rectangle's color is white, it has its blending mode, so you can actually see it. But in most cases, we don't actually care about that. So we could just use color.clear and then overlay that on top. Now heads up that there is a bug in previous versions of Xcode and SwiftUI where if you tried to do this inside of a VStack, it did not animate. I have not run into that using the latest betas, so just keep that in mind. And the other thing to note is that oftentimes this may not work in the preview here where it would work in the simulator. So those are two things that you may need to check if you don't see an animation. Okay, so again, we've just restructured things. Still no animation has occurred because we haven't told our animatable graph how it can animate. If any of these properties change, how does it know how to animate itself? And the way we do that is by uh, overriding the animatables, animatable data. Now by default, an animatable view has an empty animatable data but we can use whatever type we want as long as that type conforms to vector arithmetic. So we'll talk more about that a little bit later, but in this case, we just need to essentially proxy one of our double properties here. And so here I'm gonna say frequency equals new value. So essentially we're just wrapping our frequency value. So now when SwiftUI says, hey, hey, animatable graph, I need you to animate from this state to this state. It knows how to do that. Uh, because it is animatable, and as it interpolates the, the value from its starting point to its ending point, um, it's going to be setting that value on the frequency. So uh, what is not present here is the actual curve, and that comes from where we are saying we wanted an animation down below. We said with animation default, so this is the default curve and the default timing. So as we are setting our frequency using an animation, it's going to choose to animate frequency, but it will not be animating amplitude. So as I randomize, you can see that the frequency is changing, but the amplitude is not. And to make it a little bit more obvious, let's just comment out amplitude there. So now we're just getting a random frequency and it looks pretty neat. Now you can also do something similar if I said that I wanted this to animate with a certain particular type of animation, let's say I wanted an interpolating spring with stiffness of 20, 20 and a damping of two, and I only want that to happen for the frequency value, I could do that as well. And so instead of doing with animation as an explicit block, I could say implicitly animate any change to frequency with an interpolating spring. And now, as I randomize, we get kind of a bouncy animation for our frequency. Okay. Let's say we want an animation called ease in, or we'll just say default, but the value here will be for amplitude. And then we will restore the random amplitude as part of the randomization. Now we just need to teach this to animate both of those things. 
So if we go back up to our animatable graph, where it's determining what type of animatable data there is to animate, here we're saying there's a single value and it's a double. But we could also say animatable pair. And this gives us two values. And both of those values have to conform to vector arithmetic. So in this case, we just have two doubles. So when I get uh, the value, I need to initialize a struct with a first value and a second value. So we're going to use amplitude and frequency. And then when we're setting it, the new value is actually an animatable pair. So now I just need to say amplitude is the new value's first component, and the frequency is new value's second component. So you just have to remember what order you put them in, but it allows you to kind of stuff two values and it will animate the changes to those uh, because SwiftUI knows how to interpolate a double, it knows how to interpolate between two doubles. So let's go ahead and resume this. And now as I animate, we now are getting our animation here. Now it does seem like we are getting spring animation for the amplitude as well. And one of the ways we can determine that is as we change frequency, because we have an interpolated animation here, this is actually a spring-based animation as well. Because we said any change to frequency, including ones that are done with the slider. Now for amplitude, we don't get that behavior. So if it's just changing amplitude, it's gonna use that one ease uh, or default animation. But for uh, for the frequency change, it's gonna use a spring. When I'm doing rand uh, randomize, it's essentially fighting for which animation to use. And I think that the frequency animation is winning here. So that's something to keep in mind that you may get inconsistent or unexpected results if you try to mix these values together. Okay, so there's one other component that we wanted to animate and that was the phase. And what I'd like phase to do is just sort of sort of uh, slide the graph over so it looks like it's rippling. So as I'm gonna do this, we're, we're setting the phase to two times pi. So if I do that, you cannot, you cannot actually see it uh, working because doing two times pi is essentially the, the moment at which this graph starts repeating. So if I said, uh, you know, plus equals pi, or maybe pi over, uh, pi over eight, let's say, and I start clicking this button, you can see it doing the waving kind of animation that I want. And if I want it to go backwards, we do minus, and then we can do that. So basically I wanted to continuously do this. So if I say phase is minus equals two times pi, and then I tell it that I want this to be a linear animation. So I can say with animation, animation.linear, the duration of maybe half a second. And then I can say repeat forever. Auto reverse is false. So essentially it's going to repeat the same exact animation without bouncing back to its original value because its ending value has the same visual representation as a beginning value. So by saying auto reverse is false, it will have the illusion that it just continues forever, even though it's just repeating the same animation over and over and over again. Now, again, we have not taught it how to animate phase. So we need to go back up here to our animatable graph. And now we're kind of stuck because we have this animatable pair, but it only takes two components. And I mentioned before that each of these components needs to be something that is a vector arithmetic. So because animatable pair is itself a vector arithmetic, we can, if we want to, say animatable pair of double and animatable pair of double double. So here we've just added on a third parameter effectively but that means that we need to do this kind of weird syntax where we're saying, okay, amplitude is the first component. The second component is another pair of frequency and phase. So then here, the second component of here has a first component and phase is new value dot second dot second. Now this is really confusing and it gets unwieldy really quickly. So I only have three values, so it's not the end of the world to just kind of squint and deal with this, but we can talk in a future episode about how maybe to clear this up. Okay, so with this change in mind, if I uh, click this button, phase animation, now it's doing this repeating phase animation and I can 
change some parameters here. to give it a really cool effect. And if we want to see what it looks like a little bit faster, instead of 0.5, maybe 0.15. And now we get a much kind of faster animation there. Let's increase our frequency. Now, the reason why that animation stops when I change it is because we've specified that we want a different animation to happen when frequency changes. So it actually stops that animation. And this is actually a good thing because there would otherwise be no way to eliminate a repeating forever animation. So if you want this to sort of mix in with the others, then you're probably going to have to, you know, change, change the approach a bit. So one way we could do this is by disabling this, these two animations, I'm just going to comment them out. And if we do that, then the changes to the amplitude and frequency are not going to be setting a new animation. So I can turn on the phase animation and I can increase or decrease the amplitude. I can decrease or increase the frequency. And these values are not being animated because I haven't specified an animation itself. So I can even randomize while doing this and it looks just fine. But as soon as I start animating, either with an explicit animation like this or an implicit animation like these, one animation is gonna override the other. So that's something to keep in mind. So that's a look at animatable modifier, which is a way we can animate our waveform.